How did you feel about the death of Queen Elizabeth? So I'm in America at the moment, which meant I was a little bit uh, separated from the feelings of full on patriotism that people had in the UK. And then I flew back here Mm. and it's pretty somber, man. Mm. I mean, uh, (laughs) frankly, it's just, it's just sad. It's sad in a beautiful way. Mm. You know, she is someone that has spent so much time through so many very formative periods for this country doing something that has helped to bind people together. And regardless of what you think about the monarchy, that woman put a shift in for this country. And I I didn't realize about how the line of succession had changed because one of the previous kings uh, rescinded the throne. Or Edward. Yes. Yeah. She wasn't even supposed to be part of that lineage, and she was 10, yeah. and it goes, oh, you, you thought you were going to be some second cousin that wasn't even yeah, going to be working. Yeah. Hang on a second. You're going to be the longest reigning monarch in history ever. Uh, no, Louis XIV was longer, actually. Cause really? He, he came to the throne at like 10 or something. Uh, but she's the second longest and the longest British monarch. That's what I meant, um, yeah. yeah. But uh, Sad, man. Sad. Sad. Yeah. And the one thing that it's done, the main thing that I've taken away is that having a type of establishment within a country that causes people to come together like this mm. is one of the strongest justifications for having a monarchy that I could think about. Does right. that make sense? Yeah, totally. That, that, exactly right. Because like this is something I've tried to explain to foreigners, basically. It's like, look, like I, I've never cared about the monarchy, really. You know, I'm, not, I'm not for or against. I've never really given it much thought. It's just been one of those institutions that's just there. But it shows you that we're not a social contract society. You know, we're not a society that's based on a document that, uh, you know, some people signed 250 years ago and now we don't have to care about each other. It shows you that there's bonds of sentiment that tie everything together. And you are right, there's definitely a somber atmosphere that's over the country. Uh, even, like, just generally, it was, it's just very strange and it's not happened before, right? Because she was 96, she was literally older than almost everyone in the country and so no one knew of a time before her and everyone just kind of thought that she was going to go on forever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's the weird thing. It's like everyone's like, okay, she's 96. We probably should have seen this coming. But nobody saw this coming. And it's weird, isn't it? It's very, you know? very strange. One of my friends from America messaged me and said something along the lines, it was on the day that she passed away, said something like um, a power grab in Westminster, or a power grab in the palace must be going on at the moment. And I was like, oh, you think yeah. that this is one of those vacated Senate positions or yeah, something and yeah, everyone's yeah. sort of squirreling behind the scenes. No, 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 no. This is dynasty stuff. Yeah. This is lineage yeah. stuff. I mean, I mean, everyone's been saying it for decades about how Charles has had to wait forever. Yeah. He's in his 73. TikTok. He's almost as old as an American president, you know. Like, you know, like you like say, this, there's no, I doubt there's any power grabbing going on behind the scenes because everyone knows exactly what's going to be. Yeah. You know, it's it's been set in stone for decades. I watched yesterday on BBC News, uh, I think it was in Otley in West Yorkshire near mm. Leeds, and the town caller was out. Yeah. And apparently the way that the country used to be alerted when there was a new monarch, because there was no email or yeah. post or anything like that, is that they would send messengers out to each town centre, and then the town square, the town caller would come yeah. and he would, hear ye, hear ye, we yeah. haven't, blah, 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 blah. And the guy's got this big hat on and there's feathers coming out of it and he's dressed in this sort of kind of ridiculous way. But it, to me, that reminds us just how esteemed and how steeped in history this country is. Mm. It's not something which has had to be created. It, almost the, the fact it's so archaic and kind of silly is important because you Ooh. go, look, this isn't something that we've just created because it was efficient. This is something which has been grandfathered in over centuries and centuries and centuries. And watching that, I felt uh, I, it wouldn't be too much for me to say this is close to the most patriotic I think I've ever felt mm. toward this country. No, no, I, th- I think it's exactly the the way people are genuinely feeling about it. Like, I, I wasn't expecting the sort of depth of feeling that I saw towards uh, fr- from people but frankly, towards like socialists who would come out and be like, yeah, but I'm a Republican. It's like, look, you know, shut up. Now not is now. just not the time. You know, you know, you can be a, an asshole on your own time. And that is, in fact, what we're going to talk about now, uh, because the they've come out and like there's <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson, actually. We'll, we'll get into it in a second. But like he really hit them with, like, look, you're just disgusting people. And this went, you know, ultra, ultra viral which is a lot, and they were really upset about this. And it's like, well, sorry, you are being disgusting people. Like, this isn't about, like, oh, I want a republic, blah, blah, blah. This, this is not about this. This is about, like, 
like you're saying, like there's a there's a historic continuity that's going on here, and we are suddenly feeling our place on that continuity. You know, because yeah. up until this point, we just it it been kind of this unresolved thing in the background. You say, oh, well, that's just silly British things that happen, right? Yep. But now it's like, no, the town crier comes out, announces the death, and it's like, all right, now, now we're on our place on the on the continuum. You know, this is like an important step, right? It's an opportunity for modern culture to clash up against with mm. traditional history. Yeah. And you're starting to see some of the friction, I think, between those two things. Yeah. But yeah, man, I... I... But the, the, the emotion that underpins the tradition is very powerful, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, which I didn't really expect. I kind of expected... Just people are like, ah, you know, who cares? But actually, no, a lot of people seem to be quite bothered by it. Yes, it's... and globally as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Australia, same thing. Yeah, yeah. And, like, um, yeah, didn't, like, Bolsonaro put, like, three days in mourning or something? It's like, you were never even part of the Commonwealth. <laughs> like, why is Brazil in mourning? She's okay. a legend. But, uh, so, the... The uh, before we go on, right? If you want to support us, go to lowseas.com and check out this uh, journalist rhetorical tricks, because the journalists are, of course, basically all socialists as well, and that's what we've been seeing. This sort of disgusting rhetorical, uh, what, like I, I don't know how else to describe it, other than like an assault on the continuity of Britain, right? That's what's been going on, and I've been really hating it. And honestly, I can feel a lot of people their their sentiments hardening against this kind of stuff where the you know they're like oh, but republic society look just shut up you know oh i'm irish i'm black i'm this i don't care you know i not don't now. yeah exactly i just don't care you know this little victim narrative is just not on but uh, anyway so let's let, like, i want to i want to play a couple of clips so the the first one is from the navarro media stream right now look at michael walker's smug little face here right the it just is, I just find Who's it this guy? I'm not familiar with he, him. He, so he's the host of a communist podcast. Uh, Navarro Media, they are, they've got Ash Sarkar, Aaron Bastani, and uh, often have Owen Jones on, right? So it's the kind of... Real lo- big hitters, then. Well, uh, yeah, actually. You know, no, no, they are, they are mm-hmm. like the In London... In that circle. The, yeah, the London left-wing commentariat, who are always going on the BBC, always going on Good Morning Britain or wherever, and being like, I'm a communist, here's the communist perspective. And so... What I found interesting about this is the way that Michael could barely contain his mirth at the death of the Queen. Let's, well, let's watch. Mm, I mean, it's, it's difficult to know how to approach things like this. I mean, I'm a Republican. I assume most of our audience are probably most likely Republicans. W- what the BBC tend to say sort of in this kind of situation is, look, whether you're a Republican or not, what you can recognise is this woman has worked incredibly hard and been incredibly honourable her whole life. And for me, that's kind of irrelevant. Like, I, I, I don't have very strong feelings about Queen Elizabeth or her her life. What's kind of relevant to me is lots of people do. And I know I, I said at the introduction to this show that I, I, I don't want to appear like I'm taking this lightly because I know that lots of people care about this. Lots of people will be moved by the passing of the Queen and lots of good people will be. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to take this lightly, but hearing Liz Truss say, God save the king, at the end of that quite banal speech um, did, I mean, it did strike me as a little bit ridiculous. Um, Ash, what did you make of Liz Truss's statement there? Um, I mean, big moment for her. She's only been prime minister for two days. Well, in some ways, this would be the ideal opportunity for a conservative prime minister to emphasise their closeness to the institutions of tradition and hierarchy. So Ash then goes on and gives, you know, actually not a bad analysis of the situation. But the thing I want to talk about there is just notice the difference in tone, right? When he's trying to explain his position, he can barely stop himself from laughing. Like to him, this is just absurd how could you all be bothered by this you know as it says you know saying god save the king's ridiculous like well not in the united kingdom it's not like that's actually totally like what we should be doing and you'll notice how it's ash sarkar actually there has the somber tone mm-hmm. like through, i watched the whole inf- the, the whole stream and she's actually quite dignified about these things you think okay that's re- remarkable for her mm. uh and then so that's that's like the british communist perspective which was awful frankly but at least he was paying lip service to be like, well a lot of people are upset by this even though i can't stop even though it's not smiling. me even though i don't particularly care well yeah i don't know man it it, it really does uh, he didn't say anything too incriminating there particularly something no, tells me didn't. it's around the things that he's not saying than the things that he is saying and that's coming out in the smirk correct and yeah. i also think that 
no matter how tone deaf you are mm. or how much you see this as a political football opportunity, you know that if you say something that's too egregious right now, it's going to be so inflammatory because of how recent her passing has yeah. been that you're going to end up being destroyed. So what I think people should keep their eyes out for is the sort of rhetoric that you see in two weeks' time, in four weeks' time. Or the sort of rhetoric an American communist will give us. Let's go to Hassan Piker's oh, God, take on this, shall we? And uh, watch the people around him as well. This is this is the interesting. What's he wearing? Oh, God only knows. You know, it's something camp. But uh, let, let's play this next clip. Oh, my God! She did die! No, she didn't! The royal family's official Twitter account said the Queen died peacefully... At Balmoral this afternoon, the King and Queen concert will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. Woo! Let's go! Get fucked, Queen! Jesus. Pack watch! Christ. Woo! Oh, Smoking on the Queen pack! Here, have some. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Have some. You see the people around would like, say, dude, this is hot. Even for you, son. Yeah. But, wow, that's low. But notice how, how hollow it sounds as well. Like, Queen Elizabeth has never wronged Hassan Piker. <laughs> What's she ever done to... Oh when has he ever God. mentioned her before? Dude, you know? that's so uncomfortable. Yeah, and all, you can hear it's the not, people in the background going, oh my God, you know. This isn't even internet drama, oh, yeah. he's from one view, I'm from another. That's just... It's a an old lady that worked really hard and was nice for ages, and you're laughing about it. Uh, yeah. Oh my... Come on. And if it was in the reverse... This would be, and you had made some joke about someone that had recently passed that had done a ton of stuff that he agreed with. Yeah. This would be the most egregious thing. But it, it goes further, though, doesn't it? Because, like, like Queen Elizabeth, like, we were talking about the sort of genuine totemic position she occupied in the British psyche. Like, she 75% approval rating, right? Like, like only 25% of the country weren't like, we like Queen Elizabeth. And so it's like, an in, basically an entire country is like, yeah, she's important to us. And so, the, like, you can see the people around going, oh, my God, this Pushing feels... Pushing a bit hard here, Hassan. Yeah, this feels important. And, and like, Hassan's just an idiot about oh, it. Oh, yeah, and he had a problem with that dude that basically pretended to be a WWE star after he was boxing. Oh, yeah, yeah, Sam Hyde, yeah. Yes. Well, well again, just more reason for Sam Hyde to keep challenging Hassan. Yes. Um, and so I, I just found, find this reaction amazing, right? So the Labour Party, what do you think the Labour Party's response was? Actually, it wasn't bad, Right. Actually, the Labour Party tweets out a picture of Charles. God save the king. What was the response to this like in the yeah, comments? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's not being ratioed, which is nice. No, but uh, but that's the appropriate thing for the Labour Party of the United Kingdom to tweet out in the accession of a new monarch. Yes. That's right. Uh, the response was not great. If you can go to the next one, just uh, why aren't you uh, saying death to monarchy? Leftists have never looked like that. No, they've not. But they did chant death to monarchy uh but uh this is the notice they have a guillotine there what country are guillotines from it's not from our country is it make themselves look like a bunch of foreigners don't they like sorry like do you think the british labor party was always like yeah we need to overthrow the queen and execute her that's not what the british labor party was about you know they were about can we have some like money for poor people some money would be nice yeah. yes you know there's not not with, anyway look, going on next one uh, a party named Labour praising the monarchy. It is a bottomless pit. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Do they not understand how popular the monarchy is with working-class people? Yep. Look at the people that were out on the streets. Yeah. That they were being scornful towards. Yes. Fact. You know, oh, look, that's so pathetic. You, you're sad because the Queen does. Like, yeah. West because- Yorkshire that I saw that video of yesterday is hardly the, the stronghold of the bourgeoisie. And it's just yeah. people that are out there that want to pay respect to someone yeah. that they feel. It, it, it's so strange to feel this modern culture uh, that allows people to say and do things that previously would have been reprehensible. Yeah. I mean, this is into the tower with you stuff. Oh yeah. A couple of centuries ago. Oh yeah. This is uh, uh, but but now it's like what well, if the Labour Party isn't here to chop off the Queen's head? And if you get to the next one, they literally are like, "What's the purpose of the Labour Party now?" So what are you talking about? What's the purpose of the Labour yeah, Party? Yeah, because the Labour Party was only here to be anti-monarchy for yeah, all of time. Exactly. It was nothing to do with anti-monarchy. And this, again, very much French opinions that have snuck into the Labour Party at some point. But yeah, unsurprisingly, Ke- Sir Keir Starmer isn't an anti-monarchist at this point. Well, the guy that was knighted. Yes. Perhaps unsurprisingly. You do yeah. know that that's who's leading. Should he have rescinded exactly. his knighthood? Exactly. You know. Should he have stood for the 
the king to put the... That would have been one. But, or the opposite of kneeling, whatever it would have been. But if you're the Labour Party of the United Kingdom, what are you trying to be the, the leaders of if you're like, we're anti-monarchy? It's like, sorry, the UK is a monarchy. That's, that's the, the entire bedrock of the country is that it is a, a United Kingdom. There's not going to be a Republic of Britain because there'd be nothing holding it together. You know, at best you could have, say, an English Republic, but do you really want an English Republic? That's going to be bloody far right, isn't it? <laughs> you know, like that's going to be incredible. Imagine if, if the English suddenly get the option to vote for the person in charge, they're going to vote for Tommy Robinson. But like they're going to vote someone really far right. And so the socialists be like, oh, no, this isn't the republic we were looking for. You know, like, you idiots don't even understand what you're asking for when you ask for these things. Oh, dear. Just imagine the average bloody Labour voter in the heartlands, just that what their opinions are, and then compare them to the metropolitan elite. Yeah, there's a big disparity there. Do you think there's a bigger disparity uh, in America between the elites and the... Um, no, no, not at all. The same? I I, th- I think it's smaller right. because the Americans the the American right are Republicans you know they're the Republicans so that they, they come from the sort of Enlightenment rationalist tradition whereas we're not in Britain uh, we uh, we come out of the feudal tradition of monarchy and so the people who are asking for essentially the French Revolution are a million miles away from those people just in the working class Be careful areas. what you ask for I- exactly you know and they, they they I don't think those people would want to get rid of the monarchy at all. We like the monarchy. It's a part of our country. It's cool. I, I remember I graduated from mm. Newcastle University and they come out and there's a mace bearer mm. and everybody doffs their caps yeah. to the vice chairman of, of whatever. And I remember watching and I was 22 and I just got back from Ibiza, so I was barely conscious. But <laughs> as I was watching it, I remember thinking, this is really cool. Mm. It's really, and it's the same as the town crier yeah. that I saw on the news. There's something... You can't make it up. No, there's something that it steeps you in this country's very long and illustrious history. Mm. And yes, there are parts of it that are embarrassing and t- rubbish. We just did, we were, we were bad at being a country during some periods of that. But it is awesome to be around in a country that's got trees that are older than America. Yeah, I know, it's right? brilliant, isn't it? We've got yes. pub, pubs that are older than America. Which are about to be shut down. I watched oh, the episode yeah. the other day with, with the boys that were yeah, talking about that. it's not good, is it? No. Anyway, so let's, let's see what CNN had to say. Let's go to the colonies. What did CNN have to say? There is the generation of multicultural and diverse Britons who want this answered, who want to see their monarch finally talk about what it means and what, you know, potentially the idea of reparations, definitely justice, right? Justice. Carl, where are you finding these clips? Hey man, (laughs) CNN? Oh my God. What do you think, reparations for the British Empire now that Queen Elizabeth has died? Do you mean the empire which was the most influential in stopping slavery yeah. the ones that began slavery to be ceased yeah need to pay some reparations these people they're talking about reparations to the king of nigeria for stopping the slave trade think how much think how much money we deprived nigeria of from all those slaves we didn't allow them to trade just think how much we're terrible oh my god how awful are we and that was that was purely ideological we were like no slavery's wrong and they're like yeah but this is how we make our money there is no <laughs> there is no news story which is beyond the pale for being used as a political football to be no. kicked around is there no, the death of a queen who's served for 70 years yeah is not something that is outside the overton window of let's use this to see if we can score some points on yeah. our side but that I'm glad you brought up sides because I think what this has done is shown us who's on our side, like the normal people's side, and who's a communist revolutionary, frankly. Who, you know, the sort of person who'd be like, look, this institution goes back to Alfred the Great. We need to get rid of it. It's like, look, I don't trust you to get rid of it. Yes. I don't think you've got the competence to replace this thing. I like, learned I learned the other day about um rules that are set in street fights, right? Mm. And this I am gonna bring this back, I promise. True. So in a street fight, typically between two men you won't see eye gouging, kicks to the groin, nipping and, and fish hooking and stuff like that. And yeah. the reason is that what two men are doing when they fight is they're trying to judge who is the stronger person. Now, if you start to cheat, hmm. it no longer becomes a reliable indicator of who is the stronger person. Hmm. So even in a balls to the wall, all out fight between two men, there are still rules of combat, hmm. right? This should have rules of combat in it. Hmm. There, there are situations that occur. It wouldn't surprise me if Joe Biden perhaps w- was to encounter some medical issues at some point during his time as president. Mm. 
and if somebody from the right started gleefully shouting about it, I would say that's a bit icky. Yeah, that's that- when he when he fell off his bike. Do you remember he felt like he's I, an old man? Exactly, falling off a bicycle. Exactly. I didn't do a segment going like, "Ha ha, look at that! Joe Biden nearly broke his hip," you know, because that's gross. Yeah, you know, that's really gross. You know, and and this is exactly the same. So, I, I just a quick thing on the street fight. I find this interesting. I've been thinking about this. Like, why is it that men fight to resolve issues? Right? Does that actually resolve an issue? And I was thinking about this. And I was like, there is a way that it actually does, because what it says is that I'm going to go the distance on this conviction yes. as in you know and the, the fact that you the, the bring up the rules thing is very interesting because it's like look it's not just that we're going to have a fight about it it's that i'm going to keep fighting until you accept the validity of my position the guy who backs down first is the guy who shows the least amount of conviction for his position correct right that's what it's about and on the other side of that i mean you'll remember this from school i'm sure that perhaps your youngins have, have done this already you get into a fight with someone and on the other side of that there's this unbelievable bond mm. you actually end up i remember oh, yeah. in school some yeah. of the people that got into fights together became best friends afterwards oh, yeah. i'm gonna say didn't you hate each other a couple yeah we're best friends now because there is something that you bond together a test oh, of character but it's it had someone have pulled out the groin kick yeah. right or the eye gouge yeah. that would have been game over that yeah. wouldn't have so, yes, yeah. there are rules of combat that people, even if they're unwritten, mm. do you need to be taught that talking about stuff like this in a time when the Queen's body is still pretty warm is a bit uncouth? Yeah. Probably not. And you're not even from the same... Maybe you could say, oh, they don't understand British traditions and stuff. All right, what, what happened when your grandma died? Did yeah. everybody immediately start talking about who should divvy up the inheritance? Or did you let everyone mourn a little yeah. bit first? I mean, when, when 9-11 happened, we were like, only 3,000 people... Is that it? I mean, we've taken way worse casualties. No, we didn't say that. Yes. You know, of course not. Now isn't the time. September you know? 11th, that was posted on very it, ex- it, Exactly, yeah. And so I think the this really highlights, like, who is on our side and who's not. Because this was a, this is a clip from Tucker Carlson's segment, and it's the, the night and day, night and day, as to who is, in my opinion, a decent human being and who isn't. Let's watch this. The very least you can say about the English is that they took their colonial responsibilities seriously. They didn't just take things, they added. When the US government withdrew from Afghanistan after 20 years, we left behind airstrips, shipping containers, and guns. When the British pulled out of India, they left behind an entire civilization, a language, a legal system, schools, churches, and public buildings, all of which are still in use today. Here's the train station the English built in Bombay, for example. There's nothing like that in Washington, DC right now, much less in Kabul or Baghdad. Today, India is far more powerful than the UK, the nation that once ruled it. And yet after 75 years of independence, has that country produced a single building as beautiful as the Bombay train station that the British colonialists built? No, sadly, it has not. Not one. So despite what they may be claiming on Twitter tonight, the British Empire was more than just genocide. In fact, the British did not commit genocide, except arguably against the Dutch during the Boer War. The British did give the world the Magna Carta, and habeas corpus, and free speech. They helped end the transatlantic slave trade, as well as the ritual murder of widows in India. The British Empire spread Protestant Christianity to the entire world. It published some of the greatest literature ever written and produced the finest manufactured goods ever made anywhere at any time, including now. It was an impressive place run by impressive people. Nine day, isn't that? Thank you, Tucker. Yeah. Well, what do you think is the difference, fundamentally, philosophically, between those two videos that we've just watched? Why is it that Tucker is speaking? Because he's not invested in the UK in in any particular way any more than somebody from CNN should be. Hmm. What is it, philosophically, that is the the difference that's driving the um, changes in messaging? I think it's something that um, Edmund Burke uh, described as... um, something the French revolutionaries did, which is to create a pedigree of crimes, right? So he, w- what Burke was saying is that the, the French revolutionaries would ransack through the histories of former ages and find anything that they considered to be a moral wrong and then kind of add them together in this narrative. It's a one-sided narrative of, oh, this bad thing happened, the king did this, that, you know, you're going back hundreds of years, as we are now. And uh, and this is used as a justification to demonize and overthrow the thing that they're talking about. Whereas Tucker hasn't done that. He has given you a positive narrative, but he did say, well, you know, there's, you know, 
uh, possibly a genocide against the Boers, you know, but the, you know, this one thing and then there's other things. And so it's not just all one way, you know. And so essentially, Tucker is providing you a positive but not totalizing narrative, whereas the ransacking through the history of former eras is a totalizing narrative. There's only one series of bad events and therefore you can come away with the impression well that thing must be all bad mm. uh, and this is what edmund burke was saying about the the french nobility it's like well they're, they're nicer to the peasants than the english nobility in his experience and he'd been over there you know so he was like hmm, you know if, if you guys are bad then we, we must be worse you yes know? um so that's what i think underpins it basically it just feels like reverence it feels like yeah. a nice and a, a nice respectable response yeah. from someone and that's really what all that I'm bothered about I don't care if you agree I don't care if you like the mon monarchy or mm. not just have a, a little bit of respect yeah that's it yeah and it's it, that's exactly it it's about respect isn't it and it's about the way that you treat people so let's go to David Starkey right he was on GB News and he was making obviously amazing points because if anyone if you, you know the, the guy to talk about the passing of Queen Elizabeth is definitely David Starkey right but, so you can go watch those in your own time right and so he starts trending on Twitter because people are like, oh, he did a brilliant job here, didn't he? And so what was the socialist response? We can get to the next one. Saw the racist and bigoted David Stark. He was trending. Sadly, my hopes were dashed. He's still alive and a racist bigot. I think there's a different one, but I, this is one of, you know, one of the many things, right? And so Jeremy Clarkson tweeted out, it's just awful, isn't it? Right, this is the one I was talking about, yeah. Um, and it's just like, Look, dude, that's just awful to say about anyone yes. for any reason. Purely ideological. Mm. You know, completely ideological. And so Jeremy Clarkson just tweeted out, uh, Twitter is a handy and constant reminder that socialists are disgusting people. <laughs> 145,000 <laughs> likes because it's true. Wow. Well, this is the litmus test, right? It's been yeah. the canary in the coal mine for whether or not you can put aside the political football opportunities yeah. in place be a human. of just being a normal human. Yeah. And this is one of the things where, especially on Twitter, when I see people that morally grandstand, that tweet these sorts of things, to me, from the outside, as someone who doesn't know the person that tweeted it or their private life or anything else, it's usually an identifier that I don't think that person is a very good person. Yep. I don't think that they're very nice. And I don't think that they're all that happy. Yep. I have never been motivated to tweet the sort of things that we've gone through today about even my worst enemy. I'm well, going to be gleeful about someone's death. Why Why not uh, Why not say something really nice to Jeremy Clarkson to prove him wrong? So uh, the, the this one I found hilarious. Like I, Some guy from Harry Potter uh, replied to him saying, uh, shut the F up, you rancid old thug. But like, <laughs> right, okay. that's Jeremy Clarkson says socialists are uh, disgusting people and you reply by being... A disgusting person. Well, wow, you showed him. Wow, Sean Biggerstaff, how dare you? I've never even heard of him. Apparently he's, in, he's a no-name from Harry Potter. I think, based on that first photo, that he was the captain of the Quidditch team in the first <laughs> ever Harry Potter. That's me showing my nerdiness. Yeah, the, this... yeah just dunk on Jeremy Clarkson, Quidditch player. Yes. Uh, yeah. Shut the F up, you rancid old thug. Again, you you know, your class is showing. Yeah. It's really... It's really peeking out from underneath your skirt yeah. there. I mean, anyway, so this this kept going. Uh, and you got people, like, complaining that, like, at some point, Charles with his sausage fingers, uh, if you can scroll down a bit. He needed something this. moving, didn't he? Yeah, and so, like, I don't know what the Is there audio for this? Sorry. Uh, I don't know, actually. Is there audio? No, it doesn't seem to be. But, but uh, there is. You can hear him moving the stuff. So he's not said anything. Listen. Hear that? Oh, yeah, very briefly. Yeah, yeah. so had he have said, oh, yeah. get this, because yeah. without sound on, that sounds like he's going, get this, what, 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 is, what yeah. is this rubbish? Get it out of the way. But he's not. He's just saying, would we be able to move this? Like, yeah. he is under, could you say that I this mean, what, could, a, what a day for him. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of pressure. Yeah. Have you ever been under pressure and then yeah. there's something that's not quite right and you go, God. But also this might and be And your mum's just died. But also this might be about protocol or something. It may be that he's not allowed to touch it. I don't know. Yes. From some rule from 1527 where the yeah. monarch isn't allowed to touch the, the, the inkwell or something. As as the you man know? with the embroidered sleeves comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah Perhaps yeah. there could be something yeah. in there. You know, and everyone's like, oh, look, he's he's a terrible guy. And so Not My King started trending from this. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shut up, right? But then you've got takes like this. And I thought this was amazing, right? 
in the space, uh, yeah, in the space of three days, we have a prime minister that ninety nine point three percent of the population never voted for, and a king and a prince that one hundred percent of the population never voted for. The UK has many things, but a democracy isn't one of them. It's like okay, and so the next one you get like Jedward going abolish the monarchy. <laughs> this is who I go to. This is who I go to for my political hot takes. I want to hear from the two tallest fringes in British TV fifteen years ago, and they're Irish. So I don't take an Irishman's opinion on the British monarchy ever. Oh, you go, wow. Next one, right? So people in denial about... Uh, oh, sorry, no, I, don't worry. Yeah, so this one, right? This, I think, is fascinating, right? Look at, look at the statement here. I am a lifelong Republican and he is not my king. I want to live in a normal country with a written constitution, clear separation of powers, proportional electoral system, an elected second chamber, and an enshrined set of rights and absolutely no kings, queens, or princes. Where is that normal? Where American? is there a con- is there a country that this no. is in now? No, right. America. America does go back to the other one. Sorry, America doesn't have a proportional electoral system, so that country doesn't exist anywhere. I want an imagined country. Yeah, a normal country that's entirely hypothetical. Well, just go somewhere else. Well, where could he go? Where could he go to find that? Do, anywhere. He can't that's go not anywhere here, to find that. Yes, but anywhere that's not here would be nice that for would me. Be, yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I would enjoy it. Sent from Brighton. You're not far yeah. from the coast. Yeah, exactly. But this is the opinion in Brighton. It's like, look, that's not normal. It's actually normal to have constitutional monarchies in Europe. Like, most European countries are actually still constitutional monarchies. Do you know where else in the world still has a constitutional monarchy? Oh, probably like Taiwan or... But not many places. Thailand, like, sorry. A, f- a few places. Uh, yeah, uh, well, the, the <laughs> a lot of places would have had monarchies had the Europeans not gone and conquered them. Right. right. Yes. So I'm not terribly sympathetic, mm. but the in Europe it's very normal to have constitutional monarchies. And then he's like, okay, well, I want like what is essentially I think he's asking for the United States here, uh, because I mean, God forbid we have kings, queens, or princes, because I mean you get inequality, wouldn't you? Like in Britain. Is the system working yet? Well, okay, let's let's go over to the most the the closest place that I could find that represented his normality was California. So look at how things are going, California. Oh yeah, right, that's it. Fantastic. Twelve percent of the country's population, but thirty percent of the homeless population. California is a state that shows what American politicians can do with an unlimited budget. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? Which is to say completely yeah. annihilate it. But it's also the most unequal place on earth because the most billionaires in all of the world live in California. So the Gini coefficient or the Gini coefficient of uh, inequality will be at its highest, yes. more than South Africa. Yes, more yeah. than the United Kingdom with yes. our monarchy. It's more unequal. If you go to the next one, you see that uh, they've, they're the fifth largest economy in the world and uh, they have, of course, the most billionaires at all. And it's... Re- and it's just unbelievable. And California is the closest that he would find to his "quote unquote" normal country. And it's like, right, so it's all a lie. It's all false. And of course, California is collapsing because they keep shutting down energy plants and things like this. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the Epoch series, this one on the Anglo-Saxon Game of Thrones. If you want to find out what else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at, at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.